Chapter 5 What big ears you have! Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. scribbled his name so hard, the pen nearly snapped. The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away.
Rolo waggled his head with pride. sucked in a long breath. Luca shot back a look. Thank you. 
Chapter 6, Secret Lair. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. Rollo flung open the cabinet with confidence. He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Before he could finish, Luca scrambled up Rollo's back. around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. As Beck pulled on one of the teacups, it slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He was 
whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. He stopped at a page and mimed, holding up a monocle. Rolla looked up with heightened surprise. Rolo's finger traced across the page. Rolo scanned through several more pages. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. Lola rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca slammed the drawer shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Rollo casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. He smacked his lips. Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. crowded around a worn-down old map of Beacon Pines. <laughs> Rollo carefully traced the path with his finger. He jabbed down at the end point. Luca looked up from the map. Bex 
flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Oh. A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Oh, oh, oh. The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Thump. Thump. At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Rolo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Ooh. With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. <laughs> From the dark corner, they saw something move. Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Chapter 7 The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain, they couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. Rollo brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Ooh, ooh. Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. Ooh, ooh. He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. <laughs> 